ethnocentric, Eurocentric away? And how might some of eco-performativity actually enable you to transform what are seemingly sort of universal, um, which means, of course, you know, again, um, European um, frameworks in a way that might actually be more responsive to learning from Sigmund Doi and Otavalo, and as well as sort of teaching in yeah. those places. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That's a good one. Well, I think that um, I have found that uh, grounding in um, ethnopoetics, in the ethnography of speaking, in language philosophy, for example, uh, John Austin's work, Jacobson's uh, writings on uh, poetics, I have found them to be a really powerful springboard for my own thinking. And, uh, you know, I'm, I adapted because uh, a strict sort of Austinian would look at this and say, well, that's not exactly what John J.L. Austin was up to. Um, so one of the things that uh, differentiates what I'm doing uh, from what Austin did, uh, although it's, in, it's implicit in Austin, is I'm, I'm very interested in the stylization of the message. Uh, and that's something that counts a little bit in Austin, but it's not really particularly prominent, as, as you know. It's not something that, um, that he's terribly interested in. But I am, and I, I, as I mentioned at one point there in the talk, I think the higher levels of stylization, at least I want to go with this as a working hypothesis, are associated with higher levels of uh, performative efficacy. And I certainly can see that in uh, some of the examples that I've, uh, that I've paid attention to. But in terms of retooling and rethinking and maybe, um, you know, bringing a, 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 a say, a, a, a perspective informed by my own ethnographic uh, research, in other words, learning from uh, what those folks are up to, that has a lot of potential. I mean, I, I can't give you anything, I can't think of anything in particular to mention right now, but I think it's a very worthwhile idea. And that would go back to, like, um, you know, what Laurie suggests, uh, you know, maybe sitting down with some of the folks who are in the Colectivo and getting a sense of how, what they think they're doing and how, um, you know, how they're defining the work that they're doing. I see a hand. Yeah. This might be a good final question. Yeah, you just can't escape the music label, put the mile, it's every <laughs> That's right, yeah. So they must make a lot of money. So what can we do to get those guys to uh, repatriate some of the profits they've made up using the Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it is interesting. The, the Sibindoy Valley is very near the headwaters of the Putumayo River. And the Putumayo River runs, uh, you know, on down out of the Andes and is a major tributary to the, uh, to the Amazon. And all that water makes its way out to the big delta uh, in Brazil. Um, yeah, uh, exploitation of, uh, of cultural production. I don't have the answer to that, but there are some people who have thought about it pretty carefully. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, at, at the same time, I'm kind of fond of that label because I like a lot of the music that they, uh, that they made available to us. Um, you don't have to destroy it, right? <laughs> Yeah, no. I think your 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 question is to be taken rhetorically and it's it's an important consideration always. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody. Let's do the wine. <laughs>